Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. Uh, today we're going to talk about equations of lines and planes in space using vectors. So we're going to start with lines. So let's talk about a line. We know that lines are defined in two space in the plane, a Cartesian plane, as y equals mx plus b. Or if we want to use the point slope, we can go y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. That's uh, our good friend from calculus, right? But what do we do when we want to talk about a line in space? So in other words, if we're no longer talking about, oh, that's just awful. If this is x and this is y and this is z, and I have a line passing through space somehow, okay? And let's just call this line L. How am I going to define this? Right? It's not as simple as just defining where it crosses one of the um, Cartesian axes because I don't even know if this line passes through one of the points, or excuse me, through one of the axes, be it the x, the y, or the z. So what I have to do is I have to come up with a different way of, of describing it. And vectors play a really super key role in that. They're very helpful in allowing us to do that. So that's what we're going to, we're going to develop this. There are actually three different ways to describe a line in space. Um, algebraically, there's one called a parametric, there's one called a symmetric, and then there's a modification on the parametric way as well. So that's what we're going to do in this little section, and then we'll talk about planes in space as well. Planes definitely rely very heavily on uh, the use of vectors. So I don't know. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I did is I drew um, a little space the, the x, y, and z plane, so I've got a little more space to work. And I'm going to do a little trick here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a vector that's parallel to L, okay? And I'm just going to call this guy V, all right? That's capital V. Now, think of this guy as A, B, and C. We always want to have, in, in our textbook, some text, textbooks, they're written as x, y, and z, i, j, and k, all, all types of different ways notationally. But in this textbook, we talk about a vector, we talk about a, b, and c. So the only thing you got to bear in mind at this point is that this vector, <clears throat> excuse me, is parallel to the line L. All right? Now, what I'm going to do is, this is kind of clever. I'm going to pick a point here. I'm going to call this thing p naught. All right? p naught is going to have coordinates x naught, y naught, and predictably z naught. All right. Now, p naught. I'm also going to call this thing not bolded a. I'm just going to I'm going to give it a vector. All right. I'm just going to call it a vector a. And I know that this can get a little bit confusing between this component, this x component or horizontal component a, and this vector a. But bear with me. We're actually going to abandon this thing in just a little bit, and I'll show you why. Now, I'm going to bring a vector from here up to here. And I'm going to call this R0. So think of R0 as going from the origin to P0. I'll put a nice big dot there. And then I'm going to go take a, a similar vector, and I'm going to go from the origin up to here, and I'm going to call this R. And this is going to touch this point on L, that's really important, at point P, which just has arbitrary, arbitrary points X, Y, and Z. Now, it should be relatively obvious that, let me, let me kind of highlight these with a different color. It should be obvious that I've got this vector with this head here, this vector A with this head here, and then R comes up with this head here. And if you remember from trig, if I want to sum vectors, I take the tail of the second, attach it to the head of the first, and then I, take, I go tail to head. So if this is u and this is v, then this is u plus v, if you recall. So just by looking at this thing, if you check it out, does everybody agree that what we're looking at is r is equal to r naught plus a. But remember, v, this fancy little v down here, is parallel to a. So if I have a vector that's parallel, if I have two vectors that are parallel, that just means it's a scalar multiplication to get from one vector to the other. Now I'm going to choose a very specific scalar, and I'm just going to call that t. I don't really know what it is. It's a variable. But I can write a as vt. So I can write r as r naught plus vt. And when I have r equals r naught vt, or as your textbook writes it, r naught plus tv, then I have what's called 
the vector equation for a line in space, all right? Which is pretty awesome. Now, what we got to recall here is that I can actually write this vector. I this remember this thing is a vector. This a vector, right? Or excuse me, this r vector can be written as its own vector. I can write this point x, y, and z. I can write x, y, and z as a different vector. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Rather than going from the origin up to this point on our line, I can rewrite it as x naught plus t a. Now this a, let's be really careful, is this guy, comma y naught plus t b comma z naught plus t c. And I can rewrite it in our vector form. Now remember, two vectors are equal if and only if their components are equal as well. So I'm about to get two other forms of lines, which we're not afraid of lines being expressed in different forms, it, it, all at once, watch. So we get the parametric, this is called the parametric form. This one's pretty cool. I can rewrite this as x equals x naught plus ta. Now this starts feeling a whole lot more like a regular line. I can also write y equals y naught plus tb and z equals z naught plus tc. All right, so what we're doing is we're parameterizing x, y, and z, but look at what we have. We've got to have initial points, just like we had to have initial points when we drew lines, right? Now it's almost like we have this slope relationship. Now you, say, you may say, Ripley, whoa, 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 what's this slope you speak of? Well, the slope is the scalar that we multiplied to get from v to a. It's the stretching factor or the shrinking factor that we multiplied by. So it's, that behaves like a slope. Don't think of it as rise over run, but think of it as going from a vector that starts at the origin and just points in some direction, which makes it parallel to a vector in space, and then it expands or contracts that vector. Now, remember, t is consistent throughout. T is the same. It's not like this T is allowed to change differently for X, Y, and Z. So if that's true, then what we get is something called the symmetric, symmetric form of the line, okay? And that's where we simply solve for T. I know that T is gonna equal X minus X naught over A. This is just algebraic tomfoolery at this point, which is also equal to Y minus Y naught over B which is also equal to z minus z naught over c. And now I have the three forms of the line. We got this guy, we got the parametric, and we have the symmetric. And that's super, super helpful. Um, I'm going to play with you guys with something called the line segment form, where we're talking about a line segment instead of a full line, but we will explore that one in class, because that one takes, it, it's not very difficult, but it definitely takes um, a little bit of hand waving, and you're like, wait, why are we doing this? Well, we'll explore that in class. I think that'll be more fun for us to do sort of as, as an exploration. All right, I'll meet you back here in just a second, and we'll start talking about planes. All right, so here we go. We're going to talk about planes in space now. These go actually pretty quickly, but they're, they're a little trippy to wrap your brain around. We already know from prior experience that you can write a plane as AX plus BY plus C at Z, excuse me, plus D equals zero. But this is an advanced course. I want to make sure that you understand where that comes from. I don't just want to throw that at you. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So check this out. We're going to use that same notation that we used before with the line floating in space, except we're going to build a line in this case, in, excuse me, this time in this plane. Now, if you notice, I sort of, uh, I don't know, I got cute with my little highlighter uh, feature on my, <laughs> on my pen, which is kind of fun, but watch what we're going to do. I'm going to build R naught here, which we know goes from here to here, right, from the origin up to some point, which I'm going to call x naught, y naught, and z naught, right? And then I'm going to build an r up here. So r is going to go from the origin to the point, and this guy's going to be x, y, and z, okay? This is a point. Now, if I think of this, remember, if this is r and this is r naught, hopefully everybody agrees that this line right here 
would be r minus r naught, right? So let's see why not r or why that is minus r naught. Well, I know that I know that r naught plus r minus r naught had better equal r. So tail of the second, head of the first. Yeah, I think we're in good shape there. All right, now here's where it gets a little crazy because how do you define the plane? Well, the one thing that we know about a plane is that one way that we can define a plane is we can define it by its align normal. So, or excuse me, a vector normal. So if I take a vector and I make sure that that vector, no matter where I place it along the plane, is going to be normal. Now, this is going to be weird to draw, but let's assume that this got, you know what, I don't like the way that's coming out of there because it makes it look like it's an extension of R naught. Sorry about that. Let's go, let's go like this. Shh. Whoa, <laughs> have a little trouble here. All right, I'm going to call this the line normal. Now, wherever I place this, this N, irrespective of where these points are, wherever I place it, it is always going to be normal or perpendicular to any line contained within the plane. So you're always going to have this right angle. So this thing sticking out of the plane, coming out at you, it's kind of hard to draw, especially when you're a crappy drawer like I am. So one way to define this plane is to simply say, if I take n and I dot it with all, any r minus r naught, right, which is how we're defining this line in the plane. I'm dotting, not multiplying, right? So it's vector dotting. I know if they're orthogonal, if they're normal, if they're perpendicular, then their dot product is always zero, which is pretty cool. Now, in your text, I will tell you that we remember from the uh, distributed property of dot products that I could say this becomes n dot r minus n dot r naught is equal to zero, or n dot r is equal to n dot r naught. And this is referred to as the vector definition of a plane, def of a plane. However, we're going to do a little algebraic tomfoolery, because this way, eh, it doesn't work very well. We need to A's and B's and C's and all of that good stuff, right? So, however, watch. If I take n, I'm going to let n just be some arbitrary vector with a, b, and c. Remember, if we want an arbitrary vector, particularly in this textbook, we're going to label it as a, b, and c. So if I take a, b, and c, and I dot it with r minus r naught. Well, what is r minus r naught? Well, that's going to be dotted with x minus x naught, comma, y minus y naught comma z minus z naught, right? That's how we define vectors, right? Is we can, if I start here and I go here, remember, hopefully you remember this from, remember if I want a vector from P to Q, I simply take the coordinates of Q and subtract them from P because vectors are mobile. I can move them around. Right? It's just the same trick from, from pre-calc and then from um, the vectors from this class, all right? Now, when I dot this, what do I end up with? Well, I end up with, this is equal to a dotted with x minus x naught plus b dotted with y minus y naught plus c dotted with z minus z naught. Now, remember, x naught, y naught, and z naught, z naught are initial points, some point on this plane. All right, in space on this plane. So they're, they're, they're numbers, they're constants. We know that A, B, and C are also constants. So what I end up with is AX minus AX naught plus BY minus BY naught plus CZ minus CZ naught. And I know if I dot these, remember they're normal, if I dot these, I get zero. But remember, constant, constant, constant. So let's just gather up our constants and call them D. And I end up with AX plus BY plus CZ plus D. And you may say, well, why isn't it minus D? Well, we don't know what A, B, and C were. They could be negatives. We don't know what X naught, Y naught, and Z naught are. They could be negatives. This is just an arbitrary constant that's going to be defined by A, B, C, and then values of X, Y, and Z. And that equals zero. Isn't that lovely? This is called the scalar. Well, this guy is called, well, I'm just going to write it as the scalar definition of a plane.
def of plane. All right, that's actually this guy because we multiplied through by this scalar, right? That's defined as the the uh, vector normal to the plane, and then this guy right here is just the linear definition, which can be really confusing because we're not talking about a line, right? This is linear def of plane. All right, that's all she wrote. Now we have this in a way that we've seen before that we can now play with and do some interesting geometric things with. All right, one more thing to talk about. I'm gonna give you the formula. I'm just gonna lay it out and we're gonna discover the formula. We're gonna talk about the formula in class. So um, I'll lay out the formula here. It's the distance between a point and a plane, but I gotta prep the next page. So I'll get that squared away. I'll meet you back here in just a second, then we're done. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and give you this lecture because it's just as easy to do here and I can kind of poof, here it is. I think you'll. I think this will explain some stuff for you. All right, we're gonna find the distance from a point to a plane. So from this point right here, which I'm calling P1, which has the point in space x not y1, or excuse me, x1 y1 z1. The distance is the vertical distance. It's the perpendicular distance from the point to the plane. Now I'm I'm hoping you're starting to see sort of this theme. Everything starts with our initial point in the plane. We always do these, we, we do these really algebraic, um, algebraically clever things, but it always starts with some arbitrary point either on a line floating in space that we then attach to the origin or some point in a plane. All right? So here's our initial point, which we're calling P naught or X naught, Y naught, Z naught. All right, I'm calling this vector B. Now let's figure out what B is. B is a vector, right? So it's going to be X1 minus X naught y1 minus y0 and z1 minus z0. That's going to be my vector, just like we define vectors forever. All right. Now here's n. Please understand that this normal vector is not the distance. It is simply a vector that is normal to this plane right here. I should have used my little highlighter thing, but I got lazy. Now remember, vectors are mobile. So what I did is I slid my vector over here so that I could quickly and easily define this vector right here as being, this is just going to be comp, comp, excuse me, n, b. So it's this, remember the scalar projector, excuse me, the scalar projection of b onto n. Now in this case, it happens to be a little bit long. Now why is this green vector so important? Well, because the length of that green vector is equal to the distance. The magnitude of the green vector is equal to the, to the distance. So that, that, this guy is comp NB. If I take the magnitude of that guy, that's going to be equal to the distance, which we know from before. Now, let's think about this. Remember from your equations, this is going to be the magnitude of N dot B divided by the magnitude of N. So now I'm just going to build out the formula. And this is going to be one of those formulas that you're just going to want to memorize. It's not that hard, but you certainly don't want to like, <laughs> you, you, you don't want to um, have to rebuild this every time because it can be a little bit tricky. Well, hold on. Sorry about that. I just dropped my pen. I'm suddenly thrashing. All right, give me a sec. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip a couple algebraic steps. I hope you don't mind. This is going to be a dot x1 minus x naught. Remember, all these are going to be numbers, all right? We're going to have to have some numbers here, all right? This is going to be plus b times, or dot, whoops, b dot uh, y1 minus y naught. This is going to be plus c times, right? Because everything's a scalar at this point, um, c times z1 minus z naught. And this is the magnitude of that, right? once I get this vector in place. And then I'm gonna divide by, well, what's the magnitude of n? It's a, b, and c, so it's just the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now, whoa, 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 look, we, we've seen this before. Remember back here, we had a formula? a dot, oops, excuse me. Remember this guy here? We've seen this. This turns into this turns in to this. So we just stumble back and we can say this guy turns into the magnitude of a x1 plus b y1 plus c 
z1. Remember, z, these x1, y1, and, and z1s are our point plus d, because that's the equation. This guy right here is the equation of the plane. Whoops of the plane. And then this is just the linearization of that equation. And then I divide this by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So watch how easy it is to use this formula. Given a point, p of, let's go, 1, 3, negative 2, and a plane, let's go plane, let's call this x plus 2y minus 3z plus 1 equals 0. All right, let's find the distance. I know that d, now all this is going to be is the absolute value, right? we got this magnitude thing. It's a distance. I take a. When I look at planes, I think of this as a equals 1, b equals 2, c equals negative 3. Now, if I write that as a vector, then I know that this guy is always going to be perpendicular to the plane that we're talking about. And then according to the formula, I've got d equals 1. So the distance is going to be, I'm just following it, 1 times 1 plus b, which is 2 times 3, plus c, which is negative 3 times negative 2. I'm going to put that thing in parentheses, right? And then plus 1 all over the square root of the magnitude of the normal vector, right? That's um, It's not the square root of the magnitude. It is the magnitude of the normal vector, which in this case just happens to be the square root of, let's see, 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. So what do I end up with? This is 1 plus 6 plus 6 plus 1. That's going to be 14 divided by the square root of, let's see, 1 plus 4 plus 9, that smells, well, that's weird. Uh, I think I just got lucky with my numbers, right? So this just ends up being the square root of 14. That is the distance from this point to this plane. So easy to use. All right. Now, of course, as you're, I'm sure you're well aware, it's going to get a little more complicated. But at least you got the formulas. So at the end of this section, hopefully you know how to write an equation of a line in space and how to find, write an equation of a plane in space and how to find the distance between a point and a plane. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in class tomorrow.